Okay, so now we transition to the question, is Bernie electable? Your one word answer is yes, correct? Yes. Okay. So where's Dan the Hammer Markovitz? <laughs> Dan what? I, I just made it up, uh, yeah. Um, but, but his answer is no. Oh, so, so you're trying to, so Dan's going to... He's going to... Apparently, I'm going to hammer you. You're going to hammer me. So I wanted to... <laughs> Dan, while you talk, I'm going to yes. pat this dog. Okay, that's a fair credit. Right. But so I think you're getting the better end of the deal. Um, so I wanted to ask, I, I understand you're a big supporter of Bernie Sanders. I am. But you're also someone who's talked a lot about how awful Trump is. You've compared him to the like half dozen populist right-wingers who are eroding democracy. I think you recognize that him winning another term would be pretty catastrophically bad. And so- MAGA. What? No, yes. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we all have I'm actually a big Trump supporter. I'm uh... <laughs> We all have, well, I think you might be acting as one. That's the question. <laughs> Ooh, that was, that was a very, you're watching too many CNN segments, sir. It's that well, type of, well, actually humor. That's what's going to lose Trump, Justin, we'll by the way. We'll see about that. But People so, don't like that. My, yeah. my first question, I guess, is can yeah. you just give like a one minute why Bernie can win the general pitch? Well, I mean, I don't know what, so in a minute I'll get to you to why anybody beating Trump is actually going to be extremely hard and we need to be real about it. But the why Bernie specifically? Well, why Bernie more than someone else? Well, he polls the best against Trump, which we have according to every single poll that we've ever seen. He does the best in the specific segment of states that you need to win in order to beat Trump. We also see that from the polls. He has a higher personal approval rating than any other candidate. He has, and Nevada really underlines, he's crushing it with the Hispanic population, which is the way you open up the Sun Belt to win. And also because there's absolutely zero proof of concept in anybody else. And this is the really critical point. A vague atmosphere, so some people say, It'll be no problem. Bernie will be nominated. Everybody will love him. We'll win, we'll win, we'll win. Nonsense. It's going to be incredibly hard. However, every time I talk to somebody like you, I say, okay, great. Where's Obama? Where's Bill Clinton? You are comparing him to candidates who are losing right now, who have terrible head-to-head -head matchups with Donald Trump, who have so many vulnerabilities in terms of, like, I would be salivating to be able to, if I was Donald Trump's campaign manager, the idea of being able to run against a border, can I just be blunt, a borderline senile person that I could attack from the right on civil rights, a charisma-free oligarch who wants to take away your soda and your guns and cut social security, and we don't do this in the Democratic primary because it's very mean or whatever. He is going to dine off of the Native American thing with Elizabeth Warren the whole time. And you might not like it, but in terms of reality, and if you talk to anybody who is not part of some little liberal bubble, the only thing they're aware of her is that that is off-putting. So here's the, th here, I feel like Warren now. Here's the thing. So here's the thing. Donald Trump has a 49% approval rating right now. The Democratic Party has done a terrible job of going on offense against him, and the economy is doing well. There's going to be unlimited amount of money against him, and anybody going up against him is going to have a hard time. I would go with the person who has an actual base, who has actual fundraising, who has actual uh, coalition, who has actual approval ratings, and who polls the best against him. And if all you have in response is a generic fear about socialism as a word, look at the data for progress numbers, which are terrifying, even for me, because I do think it's important we beat Trump. Those numbers were fascinating. Generic person against Trump, fill in the blank, whatever. Somebody against Trump beats Trump. I forget the specific numbers. The Democrat against Trump shrunk. A socialist against Trump, a bigger margin than the Democrats. Because if there's one brand in modern America people hate more than this word socialist, it's the Democratic Party. So 
there's no, I, I'm not, I mean, this is just reality. So if there was one person, as an example, and I would still be, look, Bernie can win, and there's no reason other than just dogma and repetition to suggest he can't. But, it w but people would be in a much stronger position if one of these other candidates, like they all, all these other candidates who people say, well, I think if Warren had this opportunity, she would X. I think if people listen to Pete, no, Pete is a Miracle Whip candidate. That's it. Done. So if there was one candidate that you had, if, if Joe Biden of 2016, you have a case right there. Bernie would absolutely beat Trump. It could happen. But you would have a candidate who had enough functioning happening and had a certain popularity amongst bases and could handle himself at times, he might be able to beat Donald Trump. That doesn't exist in the primary. So you're asking me to go into a hypothetical universe about what might happen with the candidate who has by far the strongest campaign to take a gamble on people that I know are gonna lose. And in fact, if I was super narcissistic and being Machiavellian, I would say, go ahead, steal it from Bernie. Lose, and I'll be even more vindicated in four years of my argument, because none of these other people, and, and I did not think that a year ago. I thought there were a couple of candidates that had paths to beat Trump. Today, none. And if you think Mike Bloomberg can beat Trump, you need serious treatment. I, you know, if you think Pete Buttigieg would lose in any, I mean, you're starting to talk about candidates who would lose by margins to Trump that are the closest mathematically we could get to losing in a polarized country. So, you know, yes, he can win. Is it going to be difficult? Yes. Is there anybody who you could say with a straight face has a better position to do it than him? No. The first thing, you talked about the polling. First of all, national polling this far out is completely useless. It's like throwing darts at a board. But so is your hypothetical life about what might My or might not happen. <laughs> because, no, well, okay, no, I'm, yeah, no, yeah. I'm, I've got to be really clear about this. Yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah. But, okay. So, well, okay. so is so, your potential concerns well, in your head. So, so I, I think this far out, the polling, the country of continent of Europe is falling on something. But the, the polling that's is pretty non-predictive. And I think your point is right that there's not really another great alternative. But let's take half senile Joe Biden, right, who's maybe a few years past his prime. In national polling, he still does about as well as Bernie. In, in, there was a recent study by researchers, I believe, at Yale and Stanford. They surveyed 40,000 people. They found there's a solid 2% of people who would otherwise vote for any other Democratic candidate who would flip to Trump if it was against Bernie Sanders or against Elizabeth Warren. And they found that Bernie would make up for this with, according to the polls, unprecedented youth turnout that has shown really no sign of materializing. You mentioned the mobilization of Latinos in Nevada. Bernie's certainly doing really well in the primary. He's got an impressive organization. There's very few new voters, right? In, in New Hampshire, mm -hmm. the person who turned out new voters was, and this surprises me as much as anyone, Pete Buttigieg turning out the It doesn't surprise me. That's a Boston suburb. That's yeah. a Boston suburb vote in op open primary. There's plenty that of young people me. in New Hampshire. There's plenty of no, in actually not in New Hampshire. There are, there are young people everywhere. They didn't <laughs> vote in shockingly not, low numbers. So look, uh, oh, sorry. Well, do you want to finish all your no, points? No, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll finish for five more seconds. But so throughout yeah. these three states, Bernie's uh -huh. done pretty well. He's won pluralities. Well, he's winning. He's, he's winning, yeah. Won he's all winning. Three. Let's just be really clear. Yeah. He's won all three states. He has won That's, all three states. I would prefer to I be there. I do not agree with the booty judge campaign that he hasn't. But the point is, there's really no evidence he's turning out new voters. He's mobilizing his 2016 coalition incredibly effectively. That's actually, okay. It is so, true. Well, no, no, I mean, no, the, the numbers, yeah. no, you're, you're right about increased turnout. And that's one of the reasons that I said it's, I, we need to be real about the it's challenges. It's going to be hard, yeah. Uh, you're wrong about the coalition. The makeup of his vote is radically more diverse than it was in 2016. But in large part, that's, that's because his white vote senses. has fallen further. In all senses. He, his vote, in, 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 and it was amazing, because I, and so forgive me for taking some of my frustration with people who do this professionally that I deal with out on you. <laughs> Before Iowa and New Hampshire, when it was clear he was gonna win, it was like, well, this is the same white vote that we always see. Yeah. I said, actually, he'll underperform there. He's going to crush everybody in Nevada. Well, la, 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 la. then he crushes everybody in Nevada. Well, where's the white vote going? I mean, look, here's my point to you. I think several years ago with Joe Biden, my argument would have to stop at 
well, you're citing polls too. So polls are either in play or they're not in play. Yeah. If you want to cite a poll, then I'm going to cite all the polls that support my case, which are like 10 to 1 against your polls. But in terms of, look, in terms of you, you, that's where we're at. So, but that being said, this argument would be a draw four years ago because I would just be saying with you, yes, I think Bernie can win. And yes, I think Biden can win. Yeah. And here's why I think Bernie actually, I think there, there's landmines with Biden, which I'll get to in a second, but I think they both can win. So let's pick a good president. That would be the argument. In today's world, I'm telling you, and, and I, and actually, and you can, I hope you, I don't know specifically where to reference you, but I was somebody definitely, particularly in my circles, who was much more like, you guys don't get it. I get you all hate Biden, but this person is formidable as hell. Watching this go on for a year and seeing how Donald Trump operates, you're going to put somebody against him who, and I, again, I don't care. I don't have any moral judgments. Ukraine, trade deals, bankruptcy bill. And if you look at Trump, they're brilliantly running ads on criminal justice. If they take 2% of African-American voters, done. So if you want a guy who cannot even make it through a whole debate without like having a tantrum or getting exhausted, who's got landmines that can be attacked from the right and left throughout his whole career and a symbolic campaign that resembles like elder abuse at this point. I mean, I, no, ser seriously, I actually think it's terrible. I don't enjoy watching it. You know, I mean, we used to joke. We said, yeah, if it's Trump and Biden, they'll do the debate and the questions will be at the bottom of Jello cups. And it will be at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. But so my point is, is that, yes, there's risks with all of them, but don't get too in your head. Deal with what's actually happening. What's happening is that one person is winning. One person has a coalition. One person has millions of people that will do anything to get them elected. The other person has an extraordinarily uh, extraordinarily problematic record, maybe it'll change on Saturday, but has never even won a primary in three attempts at running for president, and mainly has residual popularity because of being Obama's vice president, and that couldn't carry through Hillary Clinton. He's a better politician than Hillary Clinton, but he's also not a historical first like she is, and they both have exactly the same problem sets for a now not game show asshole, but incumbent president. So if Biden is nominated, we lose. All right, so the, yeah. the final part of this is, and I, I take your point, Biden is a little past his prime, shall we say, but <laughs> the, the question I want to ask is, you talk I'm, about, you talk I, about. I want to be okay. not like that when I'm past my prime. <laughs> 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 you talk about socialism, and without getting into the merits of anything here, you're, mm -hmm. you're really excited about Bernie Sanders. A lot of people on this side of the political spectrum are, because he's breaking barriers, right? He's introducing an ideology that was sort of banished from American politics. Mm -hmm. But in polls, most Americans say they won't vote for a socialist. The vast but, majority but again, of Americans. Okay, so yes. are we doing polls or not doing polls? I think we're doing polls that are so are overwhelmingly that help clear. You? I think we're doing polls that have such overwhelming margins, they're not going to change. I'm not doing it. Again, it's, no. You wanna, all right, you want to throw if it we're going to do yes. polls, <laughs> yeah. Bernie wins winning head-to-heads. So that's it. And also, and also yeah. socialism is changing radically in polls, and the, certainly not even just under 35, even in the 40s, it's changing significantly. And if you look at... Um, just even today, uh, John Ding uh, Congresswoman Dingle from Michigan, she yeah. came out, she's like, people need to calm down. This is what my grandfather was trying to do, I believe, when he was in Congress. This is obvious, this is gonna do well in Michigan. So I think what you're finding is that, yes, for some people it'll be a triggering word, but frankly, for a lot of people, Democrat is a triggering word. But you're just watching like, I would, I would implore you to not just sit with steady cliches because it's a fluid and dynamic situation. If we want to use numbers, they're on the Bernie side. If you want to look at it in terms of the historical barrier there is to overcome, it's a historical barrier that's worth overcoming and it's a better bet than fatally flawed candidates who we know will lose and depressed turnout. So that's all I got. 
All right. Well, one last thing I'd like oh. to say. <laughs> the, second ha- the second half of the socialism question is, and I think this is changing because people might have noticed the global economy is teetering, people are getting sick all over the world. But mm-hmm. I, I think my argument isn't really that Bernie's unelectable. It's that he's the candidate who's most dependent on some sort of economic disaster happening. Because a, a big part of his argument is that you talk about these like economically populist, slightly socially conservative voters, and you those think are most gonna, voters. Yeah, in okay, swing fair states. enough. And, no, and like absolutely, you think he's going to bring them home, right? Bring them back to the Democratic Party. He needs to bring about eighty thousand. I just want to be really specific. Yeah. I'm not trying. This is people get mad at me, but I got to be really specific. Yeah. eighty thousand votes distributed across Michigan, Pennsylvania, and uh, Wisconsin wins the election. A lot of them right here. But, right. But I mean, that assumes also he doesn't lose any other voters, like I, all the no, voters he will in the lose suburbs. Westchester, but we'll yeah, make the, up the for suburbs it by the rest of, the of New York. Okay. <laughs> but so I agree with you. Potentially, the economy is going to collapse, and I think Bernie might be the best candidate then. But people, despite all the horrible things that are happening, there are too many people in poverty. There are too many people who don't have access to health care. The inequality is disgraceful. But in polls, and again. There's a difference between a poll that shows Bernie winning by two more points than someone else and a poll that says the overwhelming majority of Americans, at least as of last week, are wait, both... Wait, wait, yeah. wait. Make the rest of your point, but are we or are we not doing polls? We're doing polls that are that... so far outside a changeable margin that they are beyond dispute. There's a real difference between Bernie winning by okay, a three-point margin... Okay, he's the one with the by far most popular personal approval rating of anyone. But that's simply not well, true. This, it's a three-point difference. No, that's actually... No, I'm talking on personal approval rating. In personal a approval senator. rating. No, that's not, not true. As a senator in his home state, as a national political figure, his approval right, rating right. is let's, two let's to three points Let's not get into different. the yes. minutia. Okay, okay. what's your point? So you need, he needs an economic collapse because, because you think most people actually feel okay I about think, the economy. I think the state of the economy is disgraceful. So, no, the no, question I'm, is, can you convince the so American what, people here's, of that? Here's what I'd say. To, here's what I'd say. Yeah. It's, a, it's two parts. I would say that we know, and Trump, in fact, sadly showed us, that a good half of the population, probably more, they don't care what the numbers are. They really are in disgraceful situations. And that is really true. And, and honestly, like that, that should not be like a, a point in our little debate. Like That's the truth. And it's really bad for, and it's structurally bad because unless there's serious structural interventions in the economy, people will be driving Ubers and not having pensions. And I mean, life expectancy is decreasing in the United States. It's, I mean, the, the Europeans are like, it's very bad. And people live that and experience that. So I do think speaking clearly to those conditions is not only the right thing, I think it's profoundly helpful. And I think that. You know, again, Hillary Clinton, it's already great. Disaster, right? Now, on the other hand, I think to the extent, again, and I'm not, you know, trying to do like, uh, you know, have my cake and eat it too here, but it's like, yeah, he's an incumbent president with good economic numbers, right? But you cannot convince me. In fact, I would argue that's another argument for Bernie, because if we're just doing a conventional race, then great. There's an incumbent president with good economic numbers. Because what you also have to recognize, and I wish this wasn't true, a lot of Americans don't have the same type of melodramatic response to Trump that we do. Partially because I think the media has done a disgraceful job of not highlighting things like the concentration camps at the border enough, which really are an absolute obscenity and, and reflect a broader th- threat to all of us. But in most other things, people don't care. You know what? They're like me. I think his Twitter's awesome. I think it's hilarious. I don't care that he doesn't do this and that. I don't care. You, there's no normal American who's just like, can you believe that he said that at the NATO meeting? They don't care. And in fact, at this point, what's very disturbing to me is that after all these years of hyperventilating and melodrama and freakout and no strategic threat, it hits on him and Russia and yada, 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 he's at a 49% approval rating with a high economic numbers. So once again, pick somebody who can actually fight on different terrain. By the way, terrain he knows how to talk about. None of these other candidates have demonstrated an ability to do that, like at all, to the point where I'm scared. I wish, to be really blunt, I wish there was a backup. This is another trash centrist, but maybe they can win option. I don't want everything to be riding on me and my candidate. But it is. 
sadly. Uh, but also potentially optimistically. We can definitely win this. Yeah. I don't think being Jewish will be such a bad thing. <laughs> I'm also doubtful about that. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I would just like to note that, you know, of the, post, of the polls you're stating in battleground states, multiple candidates defeat Trump head-to-head. -head. Joe Biden defeats Trump head-to-head -head in, so in those polls, Joe as Biden, does Elizabeth Warren. No, Elizabeth Warren is much more mixed. It's slimmer, slimmer much margins, but it's, it's slimmer margins, but that still does happen. So to have somebody that has been mm -hmm. already in the public eye and already won those states the last time around when mm -hmm. they were taking on Hillary Clinton, to still be posting those kind of numbers, mm -hmm is much more reassuring than somebody who either is residually popular, who is performing horrifyingly, like Joe Biden, or someone like Warren who, again, can we be real? The places that people know her most, how right. is she doing? There's a, lot of, there's a lot of negative branding you can do against no, but I'm, No, but I'm asking yeah. you just even so far. I mm -hmm. know it's a different electorate, but the people who know her the best so far, how is she doing? Is she winning? Like, she's, how did she do in New Hampshire? She's obviously So, like, not, again, yeah. let's, please tell me the Bernie fears, but let's not, you know, because, God, yeah, I think no. it's terrifying all, like, mm -hmm. okay, Elizabeth Warren, she's going to, what, what, you know, look at the way she's campaigning with Bernie. She can't handle, you know, people on Twitter about Bernie. Mm -hmm. What, is she going to tell Trump to take an emotional intelligence course before they campaign? Like, no, it's not going to work. The point, the point I'm trying to get across is that yes. I do believe there are a number of candidates who can defeat Trump. Okay. I think that, you're right, he does have a 49% approval rating, but with GDP growth this high and unemployment this low, yes. his approval rating should be way higher. Should be, it should be way higher than 49%. Um, and I actually believe that Bernie does have the path to 270 electoral votes. I think you get the Rust Belt, sure. But I, and I understand there are concerns. For example, you could lose certain states like Virginia and North Carolina. He's actually doing really well in Virginia. Well, I think among he this will, electorate, he'll yeah. lose Florida. No, no, nationally too. He'll lose Florida, but I think, frankly, all of them will lose. I think Florida's. Mm -hmm. I'm skeptical of Florida as a contested place, but anyway. I, I agree, yeah. and I also think that he puts Ohio into play. Oh, for sure. Uh, because because due to the popularity Definitely. of Sherrod Brown, so I I, I I I do think that there is a path to 270 with Bernie. What I want to keep stressing. Mm -hmm. I looked at Pete Buttigieg's plan. The most unpopular part of Obama's plan was that you get a tax penalty if you do not buy private health insurance. That number gets jacked up under mm -hmm. Buttigieg's plan. Donald Trump, I can't even not describe to you how much fun he'd have running on that. Like, this guy, he looks like the Mad Magazine. He wants to raise your taxes. Mm -hmm. And that is, by the way, another advantage that Bernie has that I think does not get put across enough in co like collegiate and other kind of intellectual environments. A lot of stuff is just style and presentation. He doesn't care. Chris Christie actually said this on TV the other day. He's totally right. He's like, yeah, Bernie is effective in these debates because he doesn't care. Okay, blah, 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 Castro, I heard you. Anyways, back to my plans. And we all know from polls. <laughs> That if you talk to most people, and maybe this is unfortunate, they really are mostly voting on personal qualities. Right. They really are. And, and that's another advantage uh, that he has mostly overall. Mm -hmm. And to the extent he has disadvantages again, unfortunately, the other candidates exceed them mm -hmm. in terms of communicative ability and likability and stuff like sure. that. If Barack Obama was running, you guys would have a case. And then I would just be like, come on, let's give Bernie a chance. We've got to do this. When it comes to personal qualities as well, though, something many Americans are afraid of is the age of these candidates. Bernie Sanders is 78 years old. Like m most Americans are. Donald Trump's in his 70s. No, I, I, yeah. And Joe Biden is 77 and Elizabeth Warren Joe Biden is 70. Is 70 verging on. Uh huh. No, J Joe Biden's an old 77. Like, I, I understand. Like, I get it. All right. I get so it. So let's pair this down. Do you want us to nominate Pete Buttigieg? A 37-year-old mayor with horribly unpopular uh, policies who only I, mobilizes. I'm white not people. trying to advocate for anybody. No, I, but, all... but that's the only way this conversation can be productive. Is because, again, if we want to just sit, look here. You know what, man? Bernie's 78, and he says he's a socialist, and he yells sometimes. Yeah, that could be tough. Okay. Compared to what? What are the other options? You know, Bernie will always come up short to the imaginary fantasy candidate we have in our heads. I don't think it's like. I don't think it's unreasonable to want somebody who doesn't call okay, himself so a who? socialist, who's not, Great. Uh, who's not geriatric. Like, awesome. I think that it's like, I think it's, cool. I, don't, I don't think we're shooting for the moon there, you know? Well, in this primary, you are. 
Uh, there so, are four candidates who, who okay. don't fit so, this position. So who? Okay. So cool. Who do you think? I mean, if you think, I don't want to really, like argue the relative electoral merits right. of any of them, but there's no, there's no one that jumps out as in any way being stronger than him. Well, I think that the I think the, I don't want a charisma-free, unpopular centrist. Mm -hmm. Is that too much to ask? Is it too much to ask a, you know, to not have a 37-year-old mayor who does a terrifying Obama impression and nobody likes outside of a white college campus, mm -hmm. right? Like, is it too much to ask to not have like a senile 77 year old with like endless amounts of like serious questions about his right. campaign contributions of record? Is it too much to ask to not have like an oligarch who instituted an apartheid system of racial terrorism in New York? I would hope to see that none of these things are too much to ask, but it looks like they are because that's where we're at. But you know, you know, obviously no one's, you know, don't vote for Bernie. I, I mean, sure, but it, it, there, there isn't what you guys want. That's what I would leave the, the argument with. Not like vote whoever you want, and I'm not discounting the legitimate concerns, but what you want in contrast to him does not exist in this field or in the modern Democratic Party. And to the extent people thought they existed, how did those people do? I, the biggest call I was wrong in this election, I thought Kamala Harris was going to be super formidable. <laughs> Not popular. If we look at, look at 20, 2018, when the Democrats won the, the House of Representatives on a decisive margin, um, there, there, there's a broad agreement to analysts that, that was based on defending the uh, Affordable Care Act, uh, which enjoys great support based, among Mayor, yes. It was based, I'm sorry, is that? Um, healthcare is such an, an essential winning issue for the, the Democrats uh, that by moving to a, a far more divisive, uh, not as, as popular bipartisan plan as Medicare for All compared to simply defending the, the Affordable Care Act well, okay, would be too risky. No, there's, oh, all right. Yes. Mm, this is hard because I feel like a broken record. But again, there is no bipartisan healthcare plan. Obamacare was passed by, with the votes of three Republicans, one of whom became a Democrat, one of whom is retired, one of whom is Susan Collins. So, that, so it, it's not, that's, that's false. That, in the Senate, that's the vote totals. That's why it was passed through reconciliation. So there isn't a bipartisan health care bill. And the ACA was, in fact, for years, extremely unpopular. It became popular when... And this is, look, this is a very easy issue, and it's not a presidential campaign issue. It's very much a midterm thing because you're not running on an affirmative agenda. Bernie Sanders was one of the main people in 2017 who defended Obamacare because the argument wasn't about the whole structure of the bill. The argument was, ironically, you're going to, well, partially the patient protections, which are really important, but also you're going to get rid of the Medicaid expansion, which is what? kind of government health care, right? You're going to kick tens of millions of people out of your health care. So yeah, that's super easy. That's a, that's, an, that's a very effective midterm win, and no one made the case more across the country than Bernie Sanders. In a presidential election, it's still more, uh, you know, it's much more effective and much more strategic to actually have a position yourself. I think standing up there on stage and saying, you know, I'm going to defend Obamacare, it's so great. And then, you know, Trump, and you know, Trump, it doesn't matter. Everybody seems to think that Trump's like, I agree with you, he isn't that popular. But there's enough people, like, people still think that like, oh, we got him. It doesn't matter. Yeah, Donald Trump spent two years trying to get rid of people's health care. You know what he'll say on stage with Joe Biden? It's a disgrace. And people have to pay for it. And it's not working. You know what we're going to do? We're going to get everybody fantastic health care. And Joe Biden's going to go, I was the guy who, what? <laughs> Bernie Sanders is going to say, no, how about no bullshit? How about everybody has health care? And yes, look, we're going back into poll territory. I read the polls the way I want to read them. It's a 70% poll. You put in other questions, it comes closer to 50%. But again, no, that's 30% on Medicare for all. Where are you seeing that? No, no, where? No, 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 no. Well, okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. If you ask the most, okay. All right. All right, dude. Come on. Dude, if you, if you ask like a pure Republican talking point, yes. No, I'm, right. no, I'm like I'm not I'm not trying to I'm not trying to antagonize. Like I'm I'm I am just saying that like I think that there's this idea that Medicare for all is very popular among Americans. No, it's it's no 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 it's it well, if you frame it 
correctly, it's very popular. Mm -hmm. If you ask a Republican talking point that terrifies people mm -hmm. and causes anxiety and is completely dishonest, it's unpopular. I, actually, I've never seen the 30% one. That still seems really, like, I would have to assume that that's literally like a Republican push poll, just saying Bernie Sanders doesn't want anybody to ever see a doctor, right? <laughs> but if you get into like the polls that are real, right. where you say, it does this, but it does that, it might do this, it might do that. We're still in the 50s if we're talking about real polls. So I'm comfortable making that fight. And again, what I want to keep stressing, mm -hmm. I looked at Pete Buttigieg's plan. The most unpopular part of Obama's plan was that you get a tax penalty if you do not buy private health insurance. That number gets jacked up under mm -hmm. Buttigieg's plan. Donald Trump. I can't even not describe to you how much fun he'd have running on that. Like, this guy, he looks like the Mad Magazine. He wants to raise your taxes. Mm -hmm. And that is, by the way, another advantage that Bernie has that I think does not get put across enough in co like collegiate and other kind of intellectual environments. A lot of stuff is just style and presentation. He doesn't care. Chris Christie actually said this on TV the other day. He's totally right. He's like, yeah, Bernie is effective in these debates because he doesn't care. Okay, blah, 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 Castro, I heard you. Anyways, back to my plans. And we all know from polls <laughs> that if you talk to most people, and maybe this is unfortunate, they really are mostly voting on personal qualities. Right. They really are. And, and that's another advantage uh, that he has mostly overall, mm -hmm. and to the extent he has disadvantages again, unfortunately the other candidates exceed them mm -hmm. in terms of communicative ability and likability and stuff like sure. that. If Barack Obama was running, you guys would have a case.